There's something all around us that sustains our existence, but it's invisible. Sound mysterious? Well, we've all heard of it. It's our atmosphere. And the atmosphere is a mixture of gases, much like this cocktail is a mixture of drinks. Delicious. But what happens if the, the mixture of gases and flavours is off? All life on Earth relies on this balance. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to go and talk to some experts to find out more. Last night I was having a cocktail and Vasilis, you're an atmospheric chemist, so can you tell me what was disturbing the balance of my atmospheric cocktail? So for the atmosphere, Jack, uh, that means primary pollutants as well as secondary pollutants such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and ozone. Those come from both natural and man-made sources. So for instance, the huge impact that the man-made sources has are the chimneys, the cars, and the factories. So looking around us, we can't actually see these atmospheric pollutants. How do we know they actually exist? So that's a good point, Jack. Let me demonstrate you. Janet, start it up. So with this device, we are measuring nitrogen oxides that come directly from the vehicle exhaust. We can't see them, but we can certainly measure them. And as you can see here, the numbers are 1,200 ppbs. That's way above the human health limits. And that's pretty much the worst thing that you can have. What damage are these human-made pollutants actually doing to our atmosphere? Most of these pollutants can damage our ozone layer and that layer is a critical one because it's filtering the UV radiation that comes directly from the sun. If the atmosphere protects us from harmful radiation, what protects the atmosphere? Hi Sam, so can you tell me what's protecting the Earth's atmosphere? I can Jack, so our Earth is protected by the Earth's magnetic field and this acts as a shield to protect us from all of the harmful radiation and particles coming down from outer space. And um, where are these harmful radiation, where is it coming from? So the main source of these dangerous particles is the sun. It blasts out these hot particles which form the solar wind. This solar wind flows past the Earth at 400 kilometers per second. And it is invisible to the naked eye and would strip away our atmosphere if it was not for the magnetic field to protect us. So the solar wind's really fast, but if we can't see it with the naked eye, how do we know what it actually looks like? Well, I can't show you directly what it looks like, but I can illustrate it for you with a prop. So if we imagine that this ball is the Earth's magnetic field with the Earth inside it and that this stream is the solar wind flowing past the Earth. Mm -hmm. When I put this ball into the stream, the water is forced to flow around it. This is exactly the same as when the solar wind encounters the Earth. The magnetic field prevents the solar wind from reaching the Earth and forces it to flow around and that is what leaves our atmosphere safe. So the magnetic field is acting a little bit like a, a force field against the solar wind? It is wind. exactly like that. Wow, I never knew that solar wind could be so interesting. What would happen if the Earth didn't have this magnetic field? Let's talk to someone who's more familiar with this scenario. Beravan, can you tell me what a planet without a magnetic field is like? Unlike the Earth, Mars lacks a global magnetic field. Over billions of years, what was once a dense atmosphere has been stripped away by solar winds. So what you're left with is a Martian surface that's bombarded with radiation from space. This living roof that we're on right now, it's full of volcanic particles, and if we ignore all the plants, we can imagine that it's similar to Mars. For life to survive on Mars, it would have a better chance if it was about one to two meters below the surface, where it would be better protected from the high radiation environment. So clearly the two environments are very different. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the two atmospheres compare of the two planets? 
The Martian atmosphere is a lot thinner than Earth's atmosphere. It's about 1% of that of our planet. And while Earth's atmosphere is dominated by nitrogen and oxygen and very small amounts of CO2, carbon dioxide, the Martian atmosphere is dominated by this carbon dioxide, about 96%. And it also has small amounts of nitrogen, plus another gas called argon. And if a planet loses its atmosphere, is there any chance of it ever getting it back? Unfortunately not. Similar to Mars, once that atmosphere is gone, essentially it's gone forever. I've seen how atmospheres can be damaged and nature's way of protecting them. But if we want to continue living in this fragile bubble, then we need to escape the idea that the atmosphere is going to last forever and start to protect it.